we have been traveling the rich lands of East Africa, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful region, talking to farmers wherever we go. We have given them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey across East Africa and share the family's experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shepap Safari. Hello and welcome to Shamba Shepap. We are in Olerien in Kajedo County. We are about to meet a very hard-working family who could definitely do with a Shepap. So let's go meet them. Isaac is a talented farmer who lives near Kiserian in Kajado County. He lives on this shamba with his parents and his extended family. They raise sheep, goats and cows, grow a good variety of crops and fodder trees. Mze Joseph has a tree nursery and sells seedlings to neighboring farmers. We have visited the Shamba. Now Isaac has a surprise for us inside. Now we are ready to get to work. It's very nice to be here and we are very, very happy. Are you happy to receive us? Oh, we are happy. Welcome very much. <laughs> yeah. And you are very thankful. You see, uh, Naomi, how do I look at this? Yeah, you look, but I look better. No, I look better. I, 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 I look like a king. Eh? Yeah. I look like a queen. <laughs> oh, no. Anyway. Yes. You say, how long have you lived here? Aha. Uh -huh. And Florence, have you lived here the same years with the Buitunze? Tumeka hiyo miaka mse ya mekuelezi. Okay, how many children do you have? Uh, Tatu. 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 Tell me about your kitchen. How do how do what do you cook with? Kuni na piga na isi kuni. Tunakata isi mistieto. Tieto na sito a kuni. Okay, and is it a good experience or what are the problems your child you find in the kitchen? Shida iko. Ni ya moshi. Uki pika uko moshi na kuwa mingi sana. Okay. Isaac, what are you growing in the farm? Yeah, we grow maize, um, beans, um, some potatoes, and. Uh, when we grow some peas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How are they? Are they good? Yeah, sometimes, although the weather conditions have been a problem, mm -hmm. so sometimes when you get good rainfall, mm -hmm. they get good yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how has the has the harvest been? Um the harvest has not been good because um I think we have been uh, doing a poor selection of seeds because um we will just use the same same seeds we, we, we harvest from our shamba. Oh. Then we grow them again. Over and over, over and over and over. And over, and over. And over. Ah, I see. I see. What about the cows? I mean, do you have, do you have, how many cows do you have? Yeah, we have a few cows here, about only seven cows in this farm. Are they okay? Yeah, they're okay, but uh, sometimes we have a problem with the uh, ticks, mm -hmm. we have a problem with diseases, and also we have a problem of recurrent droughts. So, Mze, if, if you want to check on your cows at night, what do you use? Supposing you want to go and check, check on the house. Mimi natokanga na shida sana kwa sababu ya gisa. Naenda tu nikibahatisha, nikibahatisha. So you just go out at night. If you meet a hyena too bad. We hope you don't do that. <laughs> we want you to be safe. All right? Or a lion for that matter. Or a lion. Yeah. Oh my. Well, anyway, Shaba Shepap is here. Yeah. And Right. We didn't come alone. Yeah. Now, me, who did we come with? Now we came with experts. Yeah. And they look into your problems, Mama, right. in the kitchen. Yeah. Find out what could, we could help with the smoke. Right. Uh, with the cows uh -huh. as well as uh, the shamba. Yeah. Find out what kind of seeds probably okay. we can use a uh, better. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And we see yeah. if somehow we can help them, the mze here. Yeah. Yes. So that he doesn't have that problem of eating okay. lions at night or yes. buffalo. Right. <laughs> we we'll see what we can do to yeah, make yeah, sure yeah. that your shamba we is will appreciate, up. We will yes. appreciate. So. Yes. Yeah. Mabe, Chabe. Mabe, Chabe. Let's go. Is Let's that go. okay? Yeah, that's Mabe, okay. Mabe. Yeah. Welcome to Shamba Shepherd. Hi, this is Shamba Shepherd. What? What? what are you doing? Yeah? What are you doing? Yeah, just, 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 just. Don't you think it was made for me? I think we have a lot of work to do. Now, what do you want to start with? Um, Biogas seeds. Yes, I still have to deal with the cows and check on their fodder crops. Okay, let's go. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, Tony! Welcome to Shamba. Tony! Where are I coming? 
Isaac grows tomatoes, onions, maize and beans, but he tells me he has a poor harvest. I asked a seed expert from Agra to see if she could help. So Jane, you've had a look around the farm. So what were your observations? I've seen Isaac's farm. I've seen it's a very good farm, very fertile. He has tried very much as a good farmer to plant a lot of different crops. He needs to improve on the variety, he needs to improve on the management, he needs to improve on the disease management and the watering, the planting. Isaac, so where do you get your seeds? Uh, I get my seeds from the agrovet uh, in Kiserian. Mm -hmm. So normally I buy the seeds right from the shop. Aha. Uh -huh. right. Jane, what do you think? He needs certified seed. The agrovet has certified seed, right. but he needs the right variety. Seed selection means choosing certain varieties of a crop which are better suited to your area. They can also be disease resistant. It is important to buy the right seed variety at the agrovet. And today I came with some of the varieties which he can try, he can plant because I know they are recommended for years. This is maize. I saw how well you had planted your maize. This one is, okay, even the name is Olerai. Olerai is, it, it's a Maasai name. It actually means it's fated, fit for this area. Now what about spacing? He needs to work on his spacing very much. For a good maize, healthy maize crop, you need to space it at 75 centimeters between the two rows of maize. But between one plant and another, 30 centimeters. Remember, plant maize in rows 75 centimeters apart with 30 centimeters between each plant. 30 centimeters for people in this area who have long foot, you can even measure it with your foot. Right. You just step, put the maize, step, put the maize. For beans, the spacing is a much narrower. You need to only use half a, half a meter, which is 50 centimeters. For beans, allow 50 centimeters between rows and 10 centimeters between plants. We actually just use our two fingers like this. Every 10 centimeters, put a bean plant. Remember, different crops require different spacing. If you get your spacing wrong, you will lose a lot of your crop. So Jane, where can a farmer find you know, or get contacts or get information about where to buy the seeds? Send an SMS to 20354 and the message is maize and then you put a hash right, and then you type the name of the division. So maize, hash or lerieni to 20354. The answer will come back instantly and it will show you your variety. So. By the time you are going to the Angrovet, you already know exactly. what you want. Isaac grows boma roads, lucerne, and napier grass. He harvests his own grass seed and replants. He bales and stores his fodder for the dry season. But lately, his grass isn't doing so well. An expert from Ecraft came to help. Since you had a look around, what kind of fodder crops did you see? And what do you recommend that Isaac here grows? He's had uh, some um, leukenia. He would do better if he was having a coriandra because it has got a better production and it is well suited for this area. He could also do sasban. Sasban is very good in these areas, in these hot areas, and the seeds are quite cheap and they are readily available. Fruit trees like mango trees provide a shading effect so your grass can better tolerate the heat and grow. One thing, uh, the lower part of the, of the shamba that is having the, the grass is, is not doing very well, mainly because of the weeds. There are a lot of weeds which have colonized the area so that the grass is not growing very well. Mm. What would you advise him to do? I would advise him to replow the place and uh, plant sanctified seeds. When you start your new crop of Rhodes grass, always use certified seeds and plant during the short rains. Now Isaac, tell me, yes. after your grass grows and right. you, you harvest it for your cows, yes. how do you store it? Yeah, first of all, after harvesting the seeds is when I come with the panga and cut the grass and use a, a simple box beller mm. to bale and store them. To store the fodder and grass for dry season, harvest when the grass is still green soon after flowering. Cut close to the ground. 
let the grass dry in the sun for two days, turning it often. Then you can bale the hay and store in a dry place. Fodder should be dried and baled and stored for the dry season. If you bale your grass, there will be less wastage. So what have you covered so far, Naomi? See? Eh? Seeds. Hey, what are here? Seeds. Hey, now hold, 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 hold. What have you covered so far? Seeds. Seeds? Yes. And I've dealt with fodder crops. Right. And after the break, we are going to shape up their cows and then... <laughs> Welcome back to Shamba Shep Up. We are still here in... Now what's going on? Tony, did you know you can make gas from cow dung? I mean, yes! This is yes, cow dung? Yes, this cow dung is great! Uh, really? We need to have a look at that. But first, I need to have a look at Isaac's cows. Isaac has 27 cows in two grazing areas. But despite of spraying, he has lost a third of his cows recently to tick bone diseases. I asked a vet from Sidai for help. Isaac, I'm sure these are not the only cows you have. Yeah, they're not the only one. You have more? More cows in another ranch. In another ranch? Yeah. He's doing well. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, now, Dr. You, you've seen his cows. Yeah. What do you think when you saw them? Um, he's invested a lot in his cows. You can see he's got many calves, which means he's taking good care of the adults. The only challenge I could see visibly on the cows is a lot of ticks, which poses a challenge. Now, Isaac, you, as you said, you have so many cows. What particular problems do you have with the health ones? Yeah, the most problem that we have is the, the problem with the ticks, <laughs> which I think are the ones that are causing diseases in the cows. Um, we've seen that uh, if you get 10 cows, most likely three of them will die out of this year. Mr. Uchie, what is ECF? ECF is a tick bone disease, which is transmitted by the type of ticks called brown ear ticks, which are mainly found around the ears, and they're brown in color, small in size, and relatively hard in consistency. What are the recognizable symptoms of ECF? The, the first obvious sign will be an increase in temperature, which if you have a thermometer you can notice, but for the farmer, if it's a cow that gives milk, they'll notice that the milk production has gone down and the, upper, the, the cow will reduce feeding. You will obviously see the swelling of the lymph node that is around just before the, the shoulder. ECF can be fatal. After a cow is bitten by the tick, it will only take 10 days for it to become very sick and die. Have you lost many cows through this? Yeah, yeah. so many times I lost a lot of cows mm -hmm. uh, because of uh, disease. I didn't really know what is it. You should always spray your cows with a quality acaricide that is oil-based. One proper spray or dipping will last seven days. The problem is spraying is often not enough to protect your animals from ECF. Our expert has a better solution, a vaccine. Cows still die of tick bone diseases despite spraying. So that's why uh, the thought of getting a vaccine to control the most dangerous of all the tick-borne diseases, that is ECF, was born. How does this vaccine work exactly? The vaccine works by infecting the cow with several strains of the ECF. So it will cover against most of the important strains that affect our cattle. It's a lifelong cover and it is the way to go. You only need to vaccinate your animal once to get a lifetime immunity. And is it expensive? Uh, it's cost effective because if a cow dies, you lose between 20 to 250,000 depending on what is the kind of cow you're having and the market you're targeting. But vaccinating one cow will cost you uh, just a thousand bob. So it means if you sold one heifer, one year old, at around 20,000 shillings, you're able to cover 20 cattle. Because each dose of the vaccine covers 40 cows, you should bring your neighbor's animals together to use a full dose. 
the vaccine is not available over the counter in Agrovets. Contact your local Sidai office and a registered Sidai vet will come to vaccinate your animals. Sidai vets will monitor your animals for three weeks after vaccination, just in case some of your animals show symptoms of ECF and needs further treatment. So, which cows can be vaccinated? The first rule is you only vaccinate healthy animals. So sick animals, weak animals are discouraged. Animals which are below one month of age are also discouraged because they have the antibodies, the immunity from the mother, which will interfere with the vaccine. If you have a cow that is in calf, it cannot be vaccinated. It is safe to drink the milk three days after the cow has been vaccinated. Well, Isaac, you've had for yourself. Yeah. We brought you an expert. Right. And I'm sure you'll be communicating with Isaac. Yes. Okay, yes. good. Thank you so much. Isaac's family use firewood to cook. Isaac, your mother's kitchen is very smoky. Yeah? What does she use for cooking? Uh, she uses firewood. And where do you get the firewood? Uh, she gets the firewood by cutting the trees, uh, the trees around here. So you cut trees and... Is that a good thing? It's not really a good thing. It's mm. just because we have no alternative. Dominic from Biogas International has come to give them a great alternative to cutting trees. So what is the solution for, for Isaac here? Um, biogas is the solution. Biogas will completely replace all the firewood um, used at, at a domestic level in, in the typical rural homestead. Oh, that's amazing. So like you're saying, like uh, it actually cuts down on, 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 on wood? Well, actually it replaces firewood completely. Breathing smoke is extremely dangerous. It is the number one cause of death in women and children in the world. So how does biogas work? Our biogas is very simple. It's actually a natural ph phenomenon. And it's basically all you do is you put anything that's biodegradable into a sealed container and it will rot or ferment and in the process it gives off gases. Uh, one of the gases that we want is called methane and it's flammable. We've developed a system we call Flexi Biogas. It is far more affordable than the conventional systems. So let's set it up. It is easy to build a system. Experts will help you. The ground is leveled and the system is put together in a few hours. A Flexi Biogas system acts like a stomach. Organic matter like animal dung or food waste is put in one side. The system is covered like a greenhouse. The heat from the greenhouse speeds up the process. A gas is created which is piped directly into the stove. After it is installed, the system will begin to pump gas to your stove within 8 to 10 days. The organic matter turns into fertilizer and comes out on the other end. This fertilizer can be used on the shamba. A flexi biogas system will last up to 10 years. Another benefit, it will get rid of all the flies. Flexi biogas systems will run on any biodegradable matter. So you can run them on chicken poop, you can run them on rabbit poop, pig poop. You can cut the grass and feed it into the system. You can run them on water hyacinth, mathenge, that invasive weed up in northern Kenya. So anything that would be considered an invasive, unwanted crop can be converted back into fertilizer just by feeding it through a biogas digester. You only need one cow to give you all the gas you need for, one, for, for a homestead of about five to six uh, member family. The traditional African lady has been collecting firewood from the age of five all the way to Shosho, grandmother, great-grandmother. Once they have biogas, they are actually, they get a bit startled in the beginning because they've suddenly got all this free time on their hands. They then join into women groups and they then get into other income generating activities. Women are the, the backbone of um, uh, any economy. That's right. Give them energy and you've given them the world. You know, the sky is the limit. Like many farmers, Isaac and his family have no electricity. This is a problem for mama who cooks and does bidding in the evening. And a problem for Isaac and Mzee Joseph, who have work to do at night. We introduce them to Julian, who has a solution to their problem. So Isaac and Joseph, at night I'm sure it gets very dark here. Yeah. W what do you use at night? I use uh, the London. She uses currency. What are some of the negativity of that using that light? Yeah, one of the negative effects is that uh, it produces smoke. Mm -hmm. 
okay and sometimes you feel some irritation and some coughing sometimes yeah, yeah. yeah. so julian have you ever worked with beads before no actually i haven't done that but i would suspect mom has to really use uh, a light which is uh, the kerosene lantern which is close to her mm -hmm. and then again you might find that it's very dangerous because uh, once the, uh, the kerosene lantern is really close it might fall over topple over and then we all know the stories of what caused the fire mm -hmm. and uh, that is not uh, good at all. Definitely I would choose for other options thanks to the technology nowadays we can be able to have clean bright light that we will not need uh, that will not produce any smoke. I don't know how much you use maybe in a week. For kerosene I spend 100 shillings every week. Wow. Right. So if we multiply that by four which is a month that is roughly 400 bob and then multiply by a year that's roughly 4,800 or something. So you find that that's a lot of money that you can be able to put in good use with your children. Maybe you can buy for them books, uh, even for yourself. Yes, this is what we have today. We have three types, which is the S300, S2, and S20. Uh, let me just show you how it is and what it entails. So we have the external panel, which comes with a four meter cable. And it has four settings. The first one which goes for 100 hours. Then we have the second one, whereby maybe you want to have your meals and uh, discussion in the family. The third setting, which is more brighter, your children can be able to do homework. You can also read the newspaper and your wife can be able to do uh, her bidding. You can also use it to charge your mobile phone for free. But there's also a light for mom in the kitchen. I know she's using Koruboi and the smoke is making her eyes become very, very blurry. So this is a very good lantern for her. This is what we call the S20. It has an inbuilt panel. So it charges from morning till evening and then it has two settings. She just switches on. It has the first setting which is eight hours and the second setting four hours. We are not going to forget about your children. So we have the third model which we call the S2. It is a study lantern for the children and also it can be your torch. All the light lamps are very durable and are designed to last for more than 10 years and they come with a warranty. So supposing Muse goes to check on his cows at night mm -hmm. and a bull, a bull just decides to kick the lamp. Pow! Definitely, I promise you, it will not break. Maybe my neighbors will see me having this kind of lights. Mm -hmm. Where do I direct them to get them from? Uh, we are on all total petrol stations and also any solar tech electronic shops. So Isaac, do you think this is going to be a solution to your problems? Yes, I think because um, um, from today I will not be using kerosene anymore. Mm -hmm. So I will save that money for kerosene. And mama can make more beads. Yeah, of course. We've accomplished a lot on Isaac and Joseph's chamber. It's time for us to leave. Wow! Now me and Master, you're looking at... Uh, what, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for? Sidai! 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 <laughs> that, that means what, Isaac? She looks she's, nice. She's beautiful, yeah. she's nice. Yep. Yes, and she ole. <laughs> now, now you're calling me names. <laughs> that means thank you. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, now, Isaac and the family. Right. Are you happy? Very, very, very happy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Would you like us to come back again? Yeah, we would like you to come uh, again. Yeah. What do you promise us when we come here? We promise you that when you come back, <laughs> we will have improved much more. Good. Yes, yes, and it's been another great show here on... Shamba Shape Up. Shamba Shape Up is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com. Select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape Up to get more information, get involved in discussions, and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter at Shamba Shepherd.